This is Joseph Trust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, what is Zaplink and how do I use it inside of ZBrush? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and the question is referring to the plugin called Zaplink that lives under the document panel over here. Now, Zaplink will allow you to link to an external image editor, so a program like Photoshop. And this will allow you to create a image inside that editor and then project whatever you created back onto your mesh inside of ZBrush. So as an example of how this works, here I just have a tire model that I created with the Z Modeler brush. And I just want to divide this up a little bit to get around 1.5 million polygons. I'm going to divide it like so. And right now I just want to apply some painting to the vertices or the polypaint information on this model. So I could come through normally and just say select the standard brush, turn on RGB, pick a color, and start painting. But alternatively to this, I could send what I see here inside of ZBrush to an external image application, paint on the image there, and then send that back to ZBrush and have what I painted in that program projected back onto my model. So to do this process, just make sure you have your model in the direction you want to paint on. So I want to paint on it first like this. I'm going to come to the document panel here, and I'm going to click Zaplink. Now, when you click Zaplink, it's going to open up this little window here. And here you have some options. The main one you want to make sure that you click first is this Set Target App. And this is going to allow you to choose which application this image is going to be sent to. So I have this set to Photoshop right now. In addition to this, you have some other options. You have a double-sided option, which will allow you to take that projection when it comes back into ZBrush and project on the front and the back side of your mesh. You have an enable perspective, which will allow you to do perspective. And you have a fade option, which will fade the outer borders of your projection back. So it'll create a softer blend to what you already have painted on your mesh. So I'm gonna disable fade here and I'm gonna activate double-sided and I want this as orthographic as possible so I'm gonna keep enable perspective off too. After I have all this stuff set, I'm just gonna click drop now. Now when you click drop now, it's gonna take what you see inside of ZBrush here and turn it to a 2D image and open it in that image application. So here I just have it linked to Photoshop. So you can see here it just loaded a temporary zap link file here into Photoshop and you'll see it has generated three layers. Two of these layers have naming that says do not edit. So do not touch the top layer and do not touch the bottom layer. The top layer contains your material information. So this is your matte cap or shader information you have. I had a matte cap gray applied. So that is what is living on this layer here. And the layer below it, which is the one you're going to be editing, is the RGB layer. So this is what will contain the RGB values that you paint on here and transfer back. So to get this to work, just make sure you have layer one selected. Use any of the processes inside of Photoshop to paint on your image here. So I'm just gonna come over and select the basic brush here and then just paint blue on the mesh like so, just as an example here. And after you have your painting done and you have it to your liking, you now just simply need to go to file here and just save this PSD. Now after this is saved and we return back to ZBrush, ZBrush is going to check, and if that PSD has been modified, you're going to get a new window like this, which is going to give you two options, to either re-enter ZBrush or return back to the image editor. So I am happy with the results we painted in the image editor, so I'm just going to click this re-enter ZBrush. Now when you click re-enter, that window is going to pop up again, allow you to change settings if you want, and then you just simply need to click pick up now. So when you click pick up now, it's going to take that image we painted on and project it back onto your model. So as you can see here, those blue lines I painted have been projected back into the polypaint information on the mesh here. Now Zaplink will project onto the polypaint of your model and it will also project to a texture map. So let me just control Z this here to clear this painting. And now I'm gonna navigate over here to the texture map tab here, and I'm just gonna create a texture map for this model here. Now this model already had UVs, so I'm just gonna come here and click new from polypaint. And this is going to transfer the white polypaint I had applied, and then create a new texture map out of it. And I'm also gonna come over here and change this to the skin shade four. So now that I have my model and I have a texture map applied, when you use Zaplink, instead of applying the projection to the polypaint or the vertices of the model, it's going to apply it to this texture map. 
So I'm going to send it back to Photoshop again, just coming over here and clicking Zap Link. And then make sure my settings are still what I want, then click Drop Now. Now, since I already had a temporary Zaplink PSD and just need to update this, and now I'm going to get this version of my mesh here, and now I can start painting on it. Now, in addition to painting on it, I can also just apply a texture map as an overlay and paste it on this model as well. So I'm going to load in a texture map of a tire quick. And this was a texture map I got from textures.com. I'm just going to copy this and then go back to my Zaplink file here and then just paste it on top. And then I'm just gonna manipulate it a little bit so it lines up a little bit better with the tire here. And you can use any of the processes in Photoshop to distort this, match it, line it up. It's a pretty uh, easy process. After you're happy with this, we just need to merge it back down to that layer one. So I'm just gonna merge down that layer two to layer one and I wanna preserve the mask. And so you see now I should have something like this. So now that I'm happy with this, I'm just going to save that PSD file again. So just go File, Save, and now I'm going to return back to ZBrush. Now once inside of ZBrush, we just need to click the Re-Enter option again. You'll see that texture map has come over and been applied. Now I can just pick up Now, and now I have that being applied to my mesh. And you can see it's also applied directly to that texture map that I had over here in the Texture Map tab. So this process is really handy. You just need to position your model on what you want to paint on. So let's say I want to paint this area through here. So I'm going to position my model like so. I'll turn off perspective here quick. I'm going to go back to document, go to zap link, do a drop now again, update that file in Photoshop. Now I'm going to select, say, the clone brush here, clone this area here, and just fill in this area with that cloned information to get some of that seam line out of there. After you're happy, just save it. So file, save, go back to ZBrush, re-enter, pick up now, and you're gonna see that painting information I just did has now been reprocessed onto the surface of the mesh there. So that is the process on how to use Zaplink to paint or texture your model with an external imaging application. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.